in this video we'll learn how to make a strut using solidworks after opening solidworks select the part option first select the plane to start sketching now go to the sketch option and then click on sketch now select circle from the sketch tools now draw a circle keeping the point origin as the center now specify the dimension of the circle remember that to escape the sketch tool press escape button on your keyboard specifying the dimension of the circle, go to the features, then go to the curves and select helix and spiral. Now you can see various options available to define the helix. Select height and pitch. Then enter the dimension of the height and enter the dimension of the pitch as you wish. Now you can see that the height and the pitch that you have entered according to that a uh, helix is formed. After that click OK. Now go to the features and then select swept boss or base. Then select the option of circular profile. Now you can see that the helix is converted into a 3D object. You can adjust the diameter of string wire by entering the value. After that, click OK. Now, hide the helix. The first coil and the last coil should have a plain base so that it can be mounted. Now, select top plane and then select the option of sketch. Now select the option of rectangle from the sketch tool. To create a sketch, now create rectangles on the first and last coil. Now go to the features and select the option of extrude cut. Now select the option of mid plane instead of line. And now enter the dimension up to which you want to cut the material. Then click OK. Now you can see that a plane base on the first and last coil is created. Now it will be easy to mount it on the damper. Now since the spring is completed, save the part. Now go to the file option. Select the new option and then select part option and then click OK. Now in this new part file, we'll be making one part of the damper. Now go to the sketch option, select the sketch and then select the plane on which you want to sketch. Now select the circle from the sketch tool. Draw the circle keeping origin as the center of the circle. Now, define its dimension with the help of Smart Dimension. After entering the dimension, go to the Features option and then select Extrude Base. Now, enter the dimension of the height of the cylinder. 
then click OK. Then go to the shell option and then select the surface. Then enter the thickness. Then click OK. Now you can see that a shell is created. Now select the inner plane and then go to the sketch option and then select sketch. Now select the circle from the sketch tool. Now specify the dimension of the circle. After entering the dimension of the circle, go to the features option and then select extrude base. Now enter the dimension of the height of the cylinder. After that click OK. Now select the top plane, go to the sketch option and then select sketch. Now select the triangle from the sketch tool. Now select the midpoint of this line and select the origin and apply the condition of coincident. Now select the option of arc, keeping the midpoint of this line as the center of the arc, draw an arc. Now trim the line using the trim option. Now trim the other half of the section with the help of trim command. Now go to the features option and then select revolve base. Now click on the tick. Now select the top plane, go to the sketch option, select sketch. Now select circle from the sketch tool. Now specify the dimension of the circle. Now go to the features. Select Extrude Cut. Now, instead of Blind, select Mid Blade. Now click OK. Now you can see that a hole is created in the member. Since the dimension of the member was not specified, click on the Revolve and then select the option of Edit Sketch. Now specify the dimension of the member with the help of smart dimension. After specifying the dimension, exit the sketch. Since one part of the damper is completed, so save the part.
Now go to the file option, select new and then select the part option, then click OK. Now we will create the other part of the damper. Now go to the sketch, select the sketch option and then select the plane on which you have to sketch. Now select the circle from the sketch tool. Now specify the dimension of the circle. After specifying the dimension of the circle, go to the features, then select extrude base. Now click OK. Now in the features option, go to the shell option and select the surface. Now specify the dimension of the thickness. After that, click OK. Now select the inner plane and then go to the sketch option and then select sketch. Select the option of circle from the sketch tool and then keeping the origin as the center of the circle, start sketching. Now specify the dimension of this circle. Select the circle from the sketch tool. Now specify the dimension of this new circle. After giving the dimension, go to the features option and then select extrude base. Now enter the height of the hollow cylinder, then click OK. Now select the top plane, go to the sketch option and then select sketch. Select the rectangle from the sketch tool. Select the midpoint of the line and the origin and apply the condition of coincident. Now with the help of smart dimension, specify the dimension of the rectangle. Now select the arc from the sketch tool and keeping the midpoint of the line as the center of the arc, draw an arc. Now select the line from the sketch tool and draw a line bisecting the sketch. Now trim the half part of the sketch. After this, go to the features and then select revolve base and then select the line about which you have to revolve the sketch and then click OK. Now select the top plane and go to sketch and then select the sketch option. Now select the circle from the sketch tool and now specify the dimension of the circle. Now go to the features and select extrude cut. Now instead of line select mid plane. Now click OK. Now we can see that a hole is created. Now in the features select the fillet option. Now select the edges on which you have to apply the fillet. And then specify the dimension of the radius of the fillet. Then click OK. Now, since the second part of the damper is completed, then save the file.
Now we'll be doing the assembly of all three parts that we have made now to form a strut. Go to the file option, select new and then select the assembly and then click OK. Now select all the parts that you have made and click on the screen to place all the parts in the assembly. Now since all the parts are placed in the workspace, it is time to apply some mate on the parts. Go to the assembly option and then select the option of mate. Now select the outer cylindrical surface of this part and inner cylindrical surface of this part and then make them anti parallel. Then click OK. You would have noticed that after selecting those surfaces, SOLIDWORKS automatically identify the mate between those surfaces as concentric. Here, select the inner surface of bottom rod strut and the front plane of the spring. Again, SOLIDWORKS here automatically identified the mate between those two surfaces as coincident. Now, select the top plane of the bottom rod strut and top plane of the spring and make them coincident. Then select the right plane of the bottom rod strut and right plane of the spring and make them coincident. Since all the construction planes are coincident, so the spring automatically became concentric to the bottom rod strut. Now select the inner plane of the top rod strut and the plane on the spring and make them coincident. Here you can see that the spring is somewhat intersecting with the top rod strut and the bottom rod strut. So we'll make some changes. For that, now we'll learn how to edit a part by staying in the assembly. That means we'll be accessing the part by staying in the assembly. For that, click on the part that you want to edit and select the option of edit part. But before that, SOLIDWORKS is asking to first save the assembly that you have made. So first we'll save the assembly and after that we'll do the editing part. So after saving the assembly, you can see that now we are allowed to edit the part in the assembly. So we'll make some changes so that further the spring will not intersect with the bottom rod strut. So select the member and click on edit sketch option. After that, exit the sketch. Since we have made all the changes, exit the component. Now you can see that the part has been changed. Now select the top rod and select the option of edit part. Now in the part, select the member that you have to edit and then select the option of edit sketch. Now enter the new dimension. After entering the dimension, exit the sketch. Now since you have made all the changes, exit the component. You can do one more thing with the top rod strut that apply fillet on that sharp edge. So again, select the top rod strut and select the option of edit part. Then apply the fillet on the edge. For that, go to the features option and then select the fillet option. Then select the edge on which you have to apply the fillet and then Enter the dimension of the fillet radius, then press OK, then exit the component. Well, there is one more thing to edit in the bottom rod strut. So select the bottom rod strut, select the option of edit part, and then select the member that you have to edit, then select edit sketch option. Now specify the dimension of the sketch. After specifying the dimension, exit the sketch. 
since you have made the changes now exit the component well there is one more mate to apply so go to the assembly option select the mate and then select the top plane of the bottom rod strut and the top plane of the top rod strut then click ok now you can see that our strut is fully assembled so to apply some colors on the parts go to the render tools option and then select edit appearance now select the parts that you have to apply specific color then select the color and then click ok now again select the option of edit appearance and then select the spring and then apply the color to the spring and then click ok now you can see that the strut assembly is fully completed now you can save the assembly That's all in this video. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel EJS Racers. Thank you.